my name is Mirna Ayad. I'm the editor of Canvas. I have a very large list of things to steal at Art Dubai. I'm very limited right now with my choices, but I'm going to start with this because this has been an amazing discovery for me. She's an artist that I have never heard about before, but who curators have told me um, is an essential component of the Lebanese contemporary art scene. Her name is Jinan Bak uh, Maki Bashu. Uh, she's in her early 60s, late 50s. And what she's done because of this, this booth is um, it comes under the theme of trees. Saleh Barakat, who owns the gallery, approached her and asked her to create uh, something around trees. And so what she did was she used these burnt metal scraps to create the cedar tree, which is an emblem of Lebanon. Um, and she's created two other works in this booth as well. But what, what I fell in love with was she sort of hit two birds with one stone. She was talking about deforestation and how, um, you know, with the, with the environment and with industry, we are burning our landscape and we're burning our, our trees, especially a tree like this, which is going to be extinct soon if we don't take care of it. But also, because she's using these metal scraps, she's really saying the same flames that burn our forests are the same flames that are burning the region through the uprisings. So I thought that was a beautiful poetic gesture on her part. And even though I don't like to see the cedar tree, my cedar tree, because I'm Lebanese, I don't like to see it burnt, but this is a reminder. It's a, it's a call for action. My name is Alia Sanusi, and uh, I was asked by Canvas to pick an artwork which I wanted to steal. And I have to say, I, I'm going to push the boundaries a little and pick three. The first one being behind me, the Tara Donovan, here at Pace Gallery. Tara's work is bringing everyday objects and making them something extraordinary, making them something phenomenal. And the idea of phenomenology is key to her work. The idea of, of, of these mylar, um, kind of like a tape, coiled into this beautiful and interesting object is why I would want to take it home with me. Too bad I can't carry it out. <laughs> so the second piece I would steal would be a piece by Khalil Jurej and Joanna Hajitoma, which you have behind me, uh, who are also winners of the Abraj Prize this year. This work is about the Lebanese Rocket Society and it was documenting work that was done in the 1960s in Lebanon, uh, where a group of scientists, as everyone at that time, was fascinated by space. And of course, though, the idea that they were Lebanese, it was d interpreted not just as a rocket m missile, as an army missile. So last year at the Sharjah Biennale, you had the full 32-piece work uh, by Khalil and Ioana, and this is a more kind of compact and, and in some ways, uh, more compelling um, as a collector because you see the the folds of the paper and you see the folds of the work and the idea it's called l'album du président and it's about the idea of what the president was sharing with his people and with the scientists so the third piece I would see would be by Ziad Antar which is the photograph just here behind me Ziad works uh, since 2004 with expired film from ha Hisham Madani studio so he takes this expired film and takes photographs of landmarks such as Le Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower, and uh, Burj Khalifa is another very famous work of his. And you see in the photographs this kind of star equality uh, in between something of an idea of a vintage photograph and more of a modern photograph, uh, of a documentary photograph almost. And he uh, prints it manually, so it's quite labor intensive. And it's also the idea of like the lost art of photography now. You know, there's a lot of discussion about digital prints as opposed to you know, film, straight film, and he has a real passion for the idea of uh, photography in, in Hisham Madani's studio and, and the things that he captured in that point of history and in time. Actually the crowning jewel of my Thomas Crown list. If I could figure out how to uh, wheel this piece away in the middle of the night and keep my job with Art Dubai, I'd probably do it. Hege Young, this is not necessarily in keeping with the aesthetic that I usually go for in art, but there's something about this work and her, and her work in general that arrests me. This piece on so many levels collates um, the mundane that when it's strung together like this becomes so beautiful and there is something playful and childlike about this mobile. In Korea, where Hege Young is from, and, and indeed the country that she represented in the Venice Biennial in 2009, in the autumn to protect their trees, um, 
they actually take these beautiful materials and not just any old uh, string or, or plastic or, or sort of protective element, but they, they take these gorgeous vivid colors and they bind the trees and almost give them life when in fact they are stripped bare. And I, I, love, I love the poetry of this piece. Since she's an artist who is gonna go supersonic, everyone should love this piece. <laughs> Number two on my Tom's Crown list is this uh, work by Ekrem Zahtari, who um, is pretty well recognized in this region and I think going forward will be recognized as one of the seminal um, artists of, um, of this period in, from the Middle East. This particular piece is called Souvenirs from the Front. I seem to be drawn to nostalgic pieces and this is a collection of um, a particular soldier's uh, souvenirs, things that he perhaps gathered uh, during the war things that perhaps distracted him from the experiences that he was living through, natural natural um, things that he collected, which he then made his own and reproduced by painting them. This particular piece, I, I can't make out whether this is a hilal, a, a, a crescent moon, or a sickle, and I find that very moving. This is very reflective of, of Akram Zahtari's work. Um, his practice is concerned with archiving, with research. Uh, again, this sort of collecting of communal memory, of. Uh, Lebanon's memory of the war, um, just social memory. Uh, as a result, he founded the Arab Image Foundation so that we can retain all this um, and hand it down to posterity. He's an incredibly important artist. He's going to be having uh, a show at MoMA in the next year. And this is, to me, one of, the, it's very small, it's easy to miss, but if you take a moment to look at it, it's one of the most arresting pieces in the fair. Abdul Kader Al Rais, a renowned Emirati artist, was among the growing number of local talent featured in Art Dubai. He says he exhibits at the fair annually since it provides artists like him a platform to showcase their art and reach out to a varied audience of art lovers and collectors. Among his works that went on show is a 2 by 6 meter painting reflective of the Arab Spring, a theme common in many of the works presented at this year's event. I'm talking about uh... Uh, Arab Spring, the big problems which the, some part of Arabs world look like Syria, and uh, you can find you can feeling the how it's uh, I start nice color from this side, and then how it's become, and I wish also again with the uh, nice color which is uh, yellow and turquoise it will come again everything has become better than before they have a lot of ideas and uh, yeah some of it are crazy but you know i mean it's still it's within the art field and uh, some they are really some of the artists they are really talented and they have a lot of uh, impacts in, on uh, on the art field it offered a wide selection for everyone, from installations and sculptures to videos and photographs, which, according to leading independent curator Lance Fang, is proof of Art Dubai's organic growth. Before they were coming to show what the world had, now people are coming to the fair to learn what is coming from the region. I think probably the best thing for the local artists, at least what the fair can offer them, is inspiration to show that they're not alone, that there is the opportunity to make work, to exhibit it, to potentially and hopefully have a career making art. He praised the rich talent displayed this year when he judged the Skyward's Future Artists, a competition at the art fair for emerging artists. It aims to discover, support and mentor new talent. One such artist is architect Naji Munir, who created this sculpture entitled Sand Dunes, made of corrugated board. It's about communicating visually. So when you put that work of art in front of an audience, one that's knowledgeable and one that's less knowledgeable, that work of art should speak. The way we were talking about one of the, the prize winners for the Skywards Future Artist Competition, it speaks to the audience. The bold strokes, fine lines, colorful designs, somber hues, and thought-provoking concepts provided a wonderful mix. Many say they annually visit Art Dubai to be inspired as well as inspire others. Among them is an art teacher who shares his passion for art to his students. Events also here in the Arabic world is an eye-opener. You can see uh, the influence of the Arabic art uh, and also uh, the, the struggle what they have with uh, 
uh, kind of em emancipation from the woman, and uh, you can see that in the art. Also, uh, you see a lot of uh, war, uh, war themes into the art, and uh, not uh, everywhere. I just wanted to show to the world, like, if there could be a place where I could go and learn more and just show people, like, uh, like we can also do something in this world. 75 galleries took part in this year's event with artworks from more than 500 artists. While many are from across the globe, 10 artists from the UAE brilliantly represented the country's art scene, portrayed in colors and textures that conveyed visual messages loud. first pick of my Thomas Crown list of Art Dubai would be this Rakib show. The artist was born in Calcutta, India in 1974 and then he moved to, uh, to get his BA in Fine Art and Art History in London uh, from Central St. Martins. The things that identifies the artist's work is that he creates these creatures from his imagination that appears in most of his artworks that they don't relate to any kind of methodology or any kind of uh, art history. I had the pleasure of visiting his studio uh, in London last year. Going into his studio, you lose sense of time because it's, it's a transformation between um, real life to something um, from his own imagination, something from his own creation. His works are included in the collection of the MoMA of the Tate and the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And um, uh, the, uh, he's producing a huge show, uh, which is going to be featured in New York next year, in 2013, with, uh, with Pace Gallery, who are participating in Art Dubai. First of all, I'd like to show you all, uh, this is my uh, choice of uh, filming. I chose this beautiful installation by Indonesian artist Setu Legi. Seto Legi chose to do these uh, hand-sewn sandbags, uh, a part fortress, part refuge. It's in Art Dubai, uh, where there's a focus on Indonesia. So what I would uh, steal, or my Thomas Crown uh, list from Art Dubai, the first one being uh, the uh, Chinese artist uh, Zhang Huan, and the piece is called Free Tiger Returns uh, to the Mountains, number five. It was executed in 2010. The interesting thing in Zhang Huan's work is he selects uh, the ashes from the uh, Buddhist temples in Shanghai. He applies, first of all, in different variations of gray. He superimposes them on the canvas, which then become a beautiful work. And then he fixes them with glue. The beauty in Zhang Huan's paintings, uh, which makes them unusual uh, from the rest of the uh, pieces at the art fair, it's basically making paintings out of prayers. I think it's very spiritual and very beautiful. The next piece I would choose on my Thomas Crown list would be Alfred Tarazi's The Nation's Inflation, edition of three. It's really more of history repeating itself and nothing changes in Lebanon. These superimposed uh, old Lebanese lira chronologically displayed with digital collage to trace the civil war in Lebanon. The Bill of One depicts the independence in Lebanon with a beautiful scenery of Baalbek in the background. The Bill of Five, you have the, uh, the National Museum of Beirut. The Bill of Ten, you have Anjar. And the Bill of Hundred, Beit Din. And it goes on to 100,000 liras. It really evokes key moments of the civil war in Lebanon. The third and last piece I would choose uh, on my Thomas Crown list would be the stunning and super sophisticated piece by Walid Rad. This piece is part of a new project by Walid Rad. It's a little bit undescribable because you really have a museum floor that is completely isolated from the museum. It's cut off from the landscape and the museum floor becomes the artwork. In a world where we have too much of everything, Walid works a lot on uh, the reduction, on the minimalism, the disappearance and of course the architecture. I personally think it's the most sophisticated piece uh, in the whole art fair. It's on top of my Thomas Crown list, and if it's gone missing, you know who to... Very high on my Thomas Crown list is the piece that's behind me by Joanna Manna. Uh, the piece is actually called For Those That Enjoy the Smell of Burning Tires. The first time I saw Joanna's work was actually at Art Basel Miami Beach, where there were two masks by her that were being shown by CRG Gallery. That's when she first sparked my interest. I was very happy to see that CRG has come in this year with a solo booth, which is a monographic space dedicated to Joanna's work. Three works here representing the artist, but my favorite is the piece behind me for those that enjoy the smell of burning tires. I like it for multiple reasons. I like it conceptually. I like the fact that for such a young artist, it really says a lot about her and who she is. As a Palestinian who was born in Oslo and raised in Oslo, she actually speaks the language. 
from there she moved on and uh, lived in California and just graduated with a degree from CalArts. So the piece actually talks about her as an Arab that's lived in different places. What we're looking at here is flagpoles that are really very much a symbol of nationalism that have been taken down, stripped, folded and manipulated. And it's really interesting for somebody that's her age, that's lived all over the world, it basically speaks of her identity and her role and who she is. What are our different identities? I think it's a fantastic piece. I'd love to steal it. If it was a heist, it would be great to pull this one out. Um, it would be very easy to actually pick up a small painting and put it under my arm. But if you're going to steal something and really go to jail for it, it better be a worthy piece. So this is one. Another reason that I really think it's great is um, the fact that it is actually public art. So this piece, when it was first installed, was installed in front of the Kunsthalle in Oslo. And if I was to steal this piece, I'd actually give it back to the city. It would be placed into a public space, which really goes back to the fact that we need a lot more public sculpture here in Dubai and in all of our Middle Eastern cities. So that's why I'd steal this piece, and that's my Thomas Crown affair. So the second item on my Thomas Crown list is the piece that's behind me, The Solar Catastrophe, by the Puerto Rican-born American duo Alora Calcedilla. I love this piece because it fits very well into my collection of non-figurative, non-narrative work. Uh, this piece really is about the visual poetry and harmony of the pieces themselves. And it's quite interesting when we talk about non-figurative, non-narrative work, that harmony always comes up. And the piece behind me almost has lines just like you would have on a musical score. So they run through the whole piece itself. As you move around it, it's almost kinetic. The light plays with it and it throws color back at you from these broken up solar panels that have either been cut or broken up naturally. I think it's fantastic that this piece is showing here at Chantal Crusell's booth, one of the anchor galleries at Art Dubai and indeed at any international fair.